everybody, I thought I'd do a what's on my desk video today. Um, I was just thinking it might be quite fun rather than doing a what's in my handbag, what's in my stationary pouch thing to just show you randomly what's on my desk because I thought the kind of things I have in here, they do change sometimes um, throughout the month. I put random things down and stuff and there's little stories behind why they're there and I thought it might be quite interesting. I am actually obsessed with people's desks. I love seeing pictures of people's desks on Pinterest or on Instagram. Um, especially if they're a bit messy or like um, they look like they're being used. I'm not really into the whole curated, perfect, everything matchy-matchy thing. It's nice to see them for ideas for storage and stuff, but um, I get excited when I see people's desks that are sort of showing you in the, pro that, like they're in the process of doing things and creating things and stuff like that. Um, and it's always interesting to see what people have um, in terms of storage or items that they reach for all the time or like just how they how they arrange and create um, a space for themselves to work in or to play in. So um, yeah, so I do it. So I'm just going to start from the left and just go through everything bit by bit and just show you what I have. And I, I don't think this is going to be a crazy long video, but um, I'll try not to waffle too much, but I thought it might be quite interesting. So I haven't like arranged it especially for this video. All I did was not take a few things off. So when I came into the office this morning, I did think, oh, I need to tidy that away. And I was about to take them off the desk um, to put them where they need to go. But um, I left them because I thought you might be interested. <laughs> so starting from the left-hand side, I, got, I ordered these yesterday from Japan Amazon. This is just printer paper. Just in case anybody's interested, I'll try not to crackle it too much. This is the printer paper that I use. Now, obviously it's all in Japanese. So this is only really relevant for people who are in Japan or happy to order from Japan. But this is a really nice, good quality sticker paper. Um, it's called Matte Superfine Paper. Um, and it's A4, you get 20 sheets, and it's just one large um, sheet with a grid on the back. Um, obviously, the peel-off back that you don't have when you're finished sticking them. Do you know what I mean? Like the reverse, the backing. <laughs> Just ignore me if it doesn't make sense. It's not that important. But yeah, this is the paper that I use to print all my um, sticker sheets that I do for Patreon every month. Um, yeah, I quite like the quality. So I've just ordered one more set because I ran out. Um, and I've got two more months worth at least of Patreon goodies to design. And I always print them out for myself. Um, I actually got some here so I can show you. As I said, sorry, this isn't really relevant unless you're in Japan or you can order from Japan. But this is what the sticker paper looks like. So it has um, like that on the back. And I don't know, it's just quite nice. Um, um, it just feels good quality and the print, the print quality is really nice. So I like to use that. So that's what all of my stuff's printed on um, when I do my stickers every month. Um, so that's sitting on my desk, that's, that's number one. And then the next thing I have my MacBook. So I work on a MacBook Air. I'm saying that with hesitation because I can never remember what it's called. Pretty sure this is a MacBook Air. Um, I've had this for eight years. Uh, and touch wood, it's not going to break because I can't afford to get a new one. If it breaks, I have no idea what I'm going to do. <laughs> but it's still going. I try and be as gentle with it as I can. Um, I think the battery quality is slightly deteriorating now because it does need to be plugged in. Like it can be unplugged for a little bit, but not as long as it should be. It starts to sort of just turn itself off when it gets to about 50% battery. So most of the time it is just plugged in all the time. Um, but yes, it sits here on my desk because I use it every day. Now I did get this um, laptop stand. This is by Strenta. I got this off Amazon because I needed something to lift it off the desk because I was getting neck pain and shoulder pain. But whenever I'm not working on it, I take it off the stand because we live in an earthquake country, obviously. There's lots of earthquakes in Japan. And if this is on the top here, and then we have an earthquake, I'm worried it will break. <laughs> so I try and remember every night um, to take it off, or whenever I leave the room, really, to take it off and put it underneath. Um, so the stand just looks like this. Um, yeah, and I just pop it like that in the morning, in the evening even. A couple of drink mats. Anybody interested in drink mats? I made these myself. <laughs> Um, I just really like that fabric. It's like a retro mustardy. I love the colours and stuff. I made these ages ago. I really like these. Um, I might take a couple with me to the England actually. I'm not sure yet. I'm going to have this dilemma about everything. Everything I pick up I'm going to be like, should I take it? Should I leave it? I don't know. Um, over here I have a pen stand. Now this pen stand is um, it's like a really random homemade thing. Um, 
I made it out of a box of sweets. When I moved to Japan, oh, when would it have been? It would have been in 2013. Um, I, a friend of mine, her mum gave me some gifts like to welcome me to the country. And one of them was this little box. And I guess they were peanuts, um, sweets. Mm, peanuts, it says there. Peanuts hang, what? Hang, eh, han? Yeah, to hang it to whatever they are, I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> it was such a nice um, gift to be given something when I when I arrived. I decided to, I was to keep the box, and it was quite cute with the little rabbit and the moon and the peanuts. Um, so I kept it, and I just made it into this little pen stand because I didn't have that much, much money at the time either. I'm not going to go through every single pen in here <laughs> because it's going to take a while. And actually, what I'm, these are. These are sort of my essentials, my essential favourite items, which I'm going to be taking to the UK. So that's going to come up in another video when I go through all of the bits of, when I sort of set up all the items that I'm going to be taking when we move back to the UK. Um, so I'll go through them all in detail about why I love them and why I'm taking them. But I just wanted to show you the inside quickly because I, <laughs> I think I just made it out of like all random things that I had at the time. Um, random papers and stuff and it's quite interesting um well it is for me I don't know if this is interesting for you <laughs> but like um I'll show you so the insides obviously I had to make all these little compartments and it's all like sealed with washi tape along the top but the inside so for example this here it looks like a color chart and I have a feeling that is the Copic Chow um alcohol marker color chart so I've used that one inside a couple of them because I ha obviously had one of those lying around on my desk because I think I was doing a lot of um, alcohol marker stuff there. This stuff, I don't know what this is actually. I can't remember where that paper came from. I've got the faintest idea. Um, this one, it looks like is from a bag. Um, it feels like a shopping bag type thing. It's got like teacups and ladies doing something there. And then this here, is actually some homework. I was, was it homework or I was studying Japanese at the time? It's upside down, sorry. Um, so this looks like north, northeast, south and west. Those are the kanji, the characters for north, east, south and west. I was obviously studying um, kanji at the time. There's some more here. Um, I can't remember what they all are. I think that one's rain. I know that one, is, I think that's snow. Or is that one snow? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> clearly I didn't remember it very well. But yeah, so I just use really random papers on the inside. Um, and I suppose I'm quite sentimental about this because I quite like the whole handmade quality of it. And I like how it reminds me of that time when I moved back to Japan and I was living in this shared house in Tokyo and um, I was just sort of randomly making things. So um, that's kind of probably my favourite pencil holder, pen holder, and I'll probably keep that for as long as I can. So the next thing I have, I mean, I have some um, family photos to the left, but I won't necessarily show you those. I've just got a couple of drawings that my son did on the left there, which just make me really happy. Um, I love the little smiley faces on that there and um, his little Lego instructions underneath. Um, so I just like to have them there to look at. Um, I've got this nice picture because I, I love that view and I'd like to have that view one day. Um, it just sort of makes me feel quite relaxed. Um, and I have up here my tiers for Patreon because I regularly, for some reason, forget what they're called. I forget. <laughs> like I'm, I'm talking about my tiers and I'm like, oh, which one is it? And um, actually, um, so I've got studio supporters at the moment and I've got Sketchbook Print Club. Um, but this project post one has now closed. So that tier is actually now closed. Um, but I'm not crossing it out because obviously I know that's closed. Um, but yeah, I have that there just so that I can remember what they're all called and what I need to do each month. Um, then I have my February calendar, um, which is ready and waiting to be changed up from my January one, which actually I'm going to do next because it is now the 1st of February. So that February calendar needs to go up on my notice board. So on my notice board, I have the calendar. And when I finish a day, I use a little stamp. So you can see here, um, I actually need to stamp all the way up to the 31st. But I use this little stamp here. And this is a stamp by do, do, do does it say no can't remember sorry i ripped the label off um, but it's a little self-inking stamp and it just says good job with a little rabbit and a flower and i got this because i wanted something to mark off the days um and something that was kind of like yay well done you did great 
because <laughs> um, it's kind of a, it's just a nice way to like tick off the day rather than just drawing a line through it it's nice to be like yes good job you did a good thing that day because in theory I have worked hard every day on something even if it was working hard on looking after myself and relaxing um so yeah I need to stamp all of those days off the bottom and put them on um all the way to there and even though I'm probably going to check that in the bin I don't think I'm going to keep it I still like to stamp it to the end even though nobody's going to see it I don't know why but I feel like I have to stamp it before I put it in the bin don't ask me why <laughs> um I have a couple of more things that my son made um this little um this little character now he is a what do you call them when a butterfly not a butterfly when a caterpillar goes into a little is it pupa when they wrap cocoon, they wrap themselves up, don't they? Well, there's this breed of um, caterpillars slash butterflies in Japan and probably some other places too. Um, and they use little sticks. They ga gather lots and lots of little sticks and they build their cocoons out of sticks. And I think this is what this is supposed to be. It's the little caterpillar peep peeping out of his little stick house. But it's just so cute. I love it. It's a little dangly thing on a string. So I like to have that with me. I also have one down here actually of his. Another little goofy face, so that stays with me. So I'll generally on this notice board, at minimum, I'll have the calendar, but I also have notes of things that I need to do. So this is outstanding project post. I'm still waiting for the post to open because project post, which was my physical items tier from Patreon last year, I still have some that I need to post out, but Japan is not posting to the US or Canada or Australia at the moment, and I'm waiting for them to do that so that I can actually send them. So that's there to remind me who I need to send them to. <laughs> Two little pin badges at the top. The one on the left is Snufkin from the Moomins. The one on the right is actually my drawing, um, which I printed with a company called Spoonflower onto fabric, and then I made it into a little fabric badge, a fabric pin badge ages ago. I can't remember where, I must have got one of those little kids pin badge making sets or something and I made, um, used the fabric to make them, which is quite fun, quite like doing that, maybe I should do that again. In this little baggie here I've got a load of um, Japanese uh, stamps with lighthouses on, my theme for Patreon on, I think it was December last year um, for January was um, lighthouses and there was a whole lot of symbolism and meaning behind that in terms of sort of like a word of the year for me but not a word of the year it's sort of like um a mindset of the year and I go into huge detail blathering on about this <laughs> in one of my patreon videos um so if you're interested to hear what on earth I'm going on about and interested in patreon go and have a look um but yeah it's basically to do with not just being guided by a positive light but also being aware of the rocks and accepting the rocks are there. So it's a bit sort of like um, facing challenges ahead, knowing that some things are going to be tricky and rocky, but also knowing that there is a light shining there to guide you. And even if you get like, if you crash on the rocks, you could still potentially reach home. <laughs> Does that make sense? Anyway, that's kind of the thing. So anyway, lighthouses are my thing at the moment. So I've just got a few vintage stamps there. Not vintage, Christ, they're actually not probably that old. I've just got a few Japanese stamps there um, to probably use in my collages in my books at some point. Down below that I have my Tombow, well, mostly Tombow Iroji 10 pencils. I really like these pencils. They're not a particularly posh... Um, I'd say they're probably mid-range pencils. So they're not like school kid quality, but they're not super artist quality but they have a wonderful range of colors and they're like um I, god knows how many colors there are um but they're by the brand tombow which you probably would have heard of because they do the marker pens um i recommend these pencils if you're not completely ridiculously rich um you can probably still afford these and they do come in such a wonderful amount of colors and i just love the i just love using them um, I'm going to have to stock up on a few before I go because I only have this many colours and I know there's more. It's mixed in with a couple of other ones like this super, super posh one, which they don't do anymore. They've ended that one. That's an oil-based pencil, which is really fun to try. Um, and I have a few Holbein here. And Holbein pencils, I think... That's not Holbein. That's not Holbein. I do have some, I promise, somewhere here. 
Holbein. These are supposed to be um, really, really good quality. For people that do a lot of coloured pencil work, um, they're supposed to be really nice. They're very expensive if you buy them abroad, but Holbein is a Japanese brand, so they are cheaper here. But I've never seen them open stock here, so I only have a couple. They're very soft, so they're not actually the kind of pencil I'm after. Um, and as you saw, I have a few Faber Castell polychromos because I wanted to try those again these are really nice but these are more expensive here because obviously they're not Japanese um, so I may end up using these more once I move back to Europe because um, they will be obviously cheaper there and I think I have one other brand here no that's the polychromos where's my other orange one that's slightly different anybody spot it here <laughs> so this one is supposed to be a really good brand of watercolour pencil. So this should be with my watercolour pencils, actually. So this is the Faber-Castell or Faber-Castell Albrecht Dürer, uh, which is a watercolour one. Um, so this is the one where you draw with it and it dissolves into watercolour. And I got that because I wanted to see what quality it was. Um, and it seems very nice. So perhaps I will get those at some point in the future. But yeah, mostly mostly just the Tombow Elogy 10 ones, which I really love. Um, so I think I have to buy a few more before I leave because <laughs> I don't suppose they're very cheap if I get them from the UK. Those are on my desk because I used them in my Patreon work last month and I haven't put them away yet. Behind there we have a load of scrap paper. I try and use up scrap paper rather than buying paper to use as notes. So this is actually, can anybody spot it? This I think is a Nolte. An old Nolte that I didn't use the notes pages for, so I cut it up and that's just on my desk for scrap. I think there's a couple more random bits under here. Again, nothing exciting, just scrap paper <laughs> that I'm trying to use up. Um, oh dear, this is very embarrassing. Look, in my tray, these are things that I may need, so I have lots of medicine. Because I get a lot of headaches, paracetamol and ibuprofen, those are. So let's just ignore those for now. Lip balm, because my lips get dry. That was one gifted to me by a friend, so it's really nice to have that and think of her when I use it. I've got a little mini pencil sharpener. I've got a really fancy pencil sharpener downstairs, one of the hand-wound desks, you know, like the ones where you turn the thingy, turn the handle. But it's actually sort of for my son to use for school, so it lives downstairs, and I just run down and steal it when I need it. So this is just here for when I need to sharpen a pencil and I can't be bothered to go downstairs. Next I have these. So I bought these because I wanted to have some tabs that were removable um, so I could write on them and then remove them to the next page. So these are Post-it brand and I got the red, the green and the gold. Um, I suppose it was near Christmas. I think I just didn't like any of the other colours. And it was just to sort of see what they were like really. And they are really good. And I would definitely buy these again um, in different color ways. The only thing I would say is they're unnecessarily long. <laughs> so if you stuck it with that red thing sticking out the side of your book, I feel like that's way too long. You don't need that much red. Um, so I tend to trim them half there. And I actually also trim the sticky end by half so that um, they're a bit shorter. But they're really useful. And I use them in my um, cousin at the moment, uh, my Hobonichi cousin, which I'll show you another time. And then in here, apart from a load of like pencil sharpening crumbs, I just have a dot liner, which I don't really use that much. And I'm probably gonna move away from using these in the future because it's a hell of a lot of plastic waste. Um, I feel like, I know you can get refillable ones, but it feels to me like the amount of glue you get in there. I know they're handy and I know they do something that look, they do do something that liquid glue can't do, don't they? I mean, when you use these, your paper doesn't buckle. It's sort of like a dry glue. But at the same time, I feel like my conscience can't really manage knowing how much plastic waste there is, like plastic waste ratio to glue. Whereas at least if I buy a big bottle of liquid glue, I know there's plastic involved, but the glue lasts a hell of a lot longer. So I'm not then buying another bottle, another bottle, another bottle. Let me know what you think about that, but I just, I, my conscience is a bit, mm. so. This is here to use up and then um, hopefully try and recycle if they can recycle it. And then in here I just have some random bits that my son handed me. So like some random plastic thing he gave me once and said it was a precious jewel. So I've kept that. <laughs> this is like acorn cups and an acorn, a load of like manky old, um, <laughs> uh, what are they called, paper clips. Just random things. I don't even know why they're here, but they're just here for me to look at. This looks like a piece of something from Lego, so that needs to go somewhere else. Um, 
but yeah, that's always on my desk with something in. This dish is from a hundred yen shop. Um, it's China. I won't be taking that with me, um, but it's just handy to have on my desk um, as it is. And again, I have more paper clips over here and a rubber. Actually, hang on. I want to show you just a quick show off. This is my mum's artwork. So she used to paint bone china at one point when we were young. Um, as you can see, she's very talented. So she painted all that with a dip pen um, into obviously china glaze. I don't know what it's called, like paint, china paint, paint that you can paint on china with. Um, so she's painted all the lines with dip, like a dip pen, like a calligraphy type pen. And then she would fire it in the kiln. And then after that firing, she would then come along and paint in all the, the colours around so you can probably see a huge influence from her on my work and I'm kind of embarrassed about it really, to be honest like I feel like I've just copied her but um <laughs> and I think you can appreciate how talented she is and isn't it lovely and um, so I have that with me um because I like to have something of hers on my desk and in that I think I had loads more paper clips and a rubber which is not very exciting but I did have this this is um a vintage uh god my brain matchbox okay so no matches in it so i used to sell like um sort of retro vintage japanese items on etsy um a few years back and i got this as part of that and i just i really like the um the flowers and the font for coffee room elise is the name of the coffee room that says elise um, which i guess is ah uh, elise or elise um I don't know, I thought that was quite nice. I don't know why it's on my desk, but it's on my desk, so I'm showing it to you. This is some random embroidery that my granny did. Now, she'd be very embarrassed if I showed you this, because I'm sure she would say it's horrendous and it's not her best work, but it's so much my granny, like all the bright colours and stuff. She um, is very much into embroidery and fabric and textiles and things like that, and she was, um, she, I mean, she still is, but she has Alzheimer's now, so she can't really do anything she doesn't really do anything, her sight's failing, etc. But she was, or still is, a fantastic embroiderer and sort of textile artist. And she randomly sends me little snippets of stuff, or my mum randomly sends me little snippets. So this is like um, waiting for me to decide what to do with it. I think I might make it into a, a pouch or something. I haven't decided yet. And she loves cats, which is why there's a cat there. And she loves bright colours, <laughs> which is why it has bright colours. Right, we're getting there, final section. Um, on here I have mild liners, so I won't go through these because I'm sure a lot of you know what mild liners are, but I just have them on my desk because I was using them, particularly at the start of the year when I was setting up my planners, but I just grabbed them occasionally, so they're on there. I did at one point start marking out, um, like I put dots on with a permanent marker, so I knew which ones I was using for certain things, but I've long forgotten what that was for. No idea, but... Um, that is something you can do if you want to sort of colour code and you always forget which colour it is by looking at the lid. You can actually just write on here. Um, you could actually write just a word along here, like um, somebody's name, if you were going to use this for their, um, their colour code. But if you're like me, you'll forget and change your mind and then it'll be, it'll be meaningless. But um, <laughs> those are on my desk. Um, a drinks mat. This is actually another thing by my mum. My mum cut this all out of paper, would you believe? So originally this was um, a paper cut, all in black paper. She cut this out and then she scanned it into Photoshop, I assume, and fiddled with it and made these beautiful silhouettes. She did a whole series of them. Um, I don't know, I've got another one here. And it's all ladies throughout the ages having coffee together. So she would do, she'd research. So this looks to me like 18th century, late 18th century. So she would then, um, she would research the light fittings of the time, the dress of the time, what bags they had at the time, um, what the, the teapots and everything would be at the time and the furniture. <laughs> so everything is like fitted into that particular um, time. Does that make sense? Everything is historically accurate is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and it's really wonderful. And she went all the way through to, I think, the 1960s um, or 50s or 60s, I think, was. Um, but these are really lovely. And they made loads of, her and her husband made loads of drink mats. And um, she, she brought me some over here to use, which is really good. 
Um, box of tissues, not very exciting, I won't show you that. Family photo. And this is another of my granny's embroideries um, of a little cottage and some sheep and things, um, which is actually, she's painted onto the fabric and then embroidered very lightly over the top. Um, but I really like that. So that's up there. Again, not quite sure what I'm doing with it, but it's just waiting until I decide. This is a lamp. <laughs> I don't know why this is on my desk. It's a kid's lamp. You press it, well, I bought it when my son was little, you press the light and it gives a dim light for like, I think 20 minutes or 15 and then it shuts off again. So I was using this during the night when I was breastfeeding my son and then we used it when he was a little bit scared of the dark and he would be able to turn on himself and fall asleep and then it would go off after he'd fallen asleep. Um, but he said to me very bravely the other day, I, well, six months ago probably, I don't need this anymore, you can get rid of this. But it's just been sat on my desk because I keep forgetting it's there. You know when things are on your desk so long you just don't even notice them anymore. That's basically what happened. And then finally we get to this section, <laughs> which is the planner section. So I keep these, these planners on my desk, um, this sort of stack here, this all stays in the office. Um, and doesn't really go anywhere. So, and I use them every morning. Um, and I have a little morning routine going at the moment, particularly using these two. So this is a five-year Hobonichi, and this is a cousin. This is my work planner. And then this is my, like, essentials, essentials, essentials um, pencil case, which um, I made myself, and I will show you the insides and the pens in there. I'll probably, what I'll do is I'll do a planner video, current planner situation video, and I'll go through everything in this stash. Um, but yeah, these are always on my desk because I use them every morning, and I don't carry them anywhere. Well, sometimes I take my work planner, but um, I don't carry them anywhere, so they live here. Randomly, I have um, calorie mate because I sometimes get super starving hungry before it's appropriate to eat lunch. Um, and it's probably not really that healthy, but I just eat one of these. Actually, the other reason I eat one of these is because I have a whole stack of them. Um, it's, just like a, it's like an energy bar. I don't know if Calorie Mate is a non-Japanese brand or if it's Japanese. But um, it's sort of, I have tons of them in the cupboard and they're part of my like emergency earthquake food stash, but they're all going out of date. So I'm sort of trying to get my way through them. So they go out of date in April and obviously there's no point leaving them here after you leave. <laughs> so I'm sort of trying to nibble my way through them. They just take the edge off your hunger. They do contain a lot of vitamins and stuff, um, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. But yes, um, that's just why that's there, slightly embarrassingly. Um, I have my phone and I have my um, everyday carry, which is my home in two weeks, which again, I will show you in another video. Um, so these are the ones that I take up and down. I take it downstairs when I'm downstairs in the evening and then I bring it up again at bedtime. Um, so I kind of keep these with me the whole time. I bought some blotting paper. Um, so I went for the uh, Airban, Airban, I don't know how you say it, Herban, Airban, probably Airban, isn't it? It's French. Um, blotting paper. And it's slightly annoyingly very slimmer than A5. Um, because I want to use it obviously in my A5 cousin and in my A5 five year. Um, and it's not gonna quite go to the edge, I think, but I figured it's better than nothing. Um, I've been using tissues. <laughs> so every time I use my, my <laughs> can you see this delightful tissue hanging out? Cause I'm writing in fountain pen. I'm using like a tissue to, to go in between each page as I write it and it's sort of, this sort of hangs out and it gets all scratchy and I thought, well, maybe I should treat myself to some blotting paper. So I'm going to have a sheet in each of these and I'm probably going to cut a sheet to week size um, to use in here because I use a fountain pen in my weeks at the moment. So that's what that's there on my desk for. And then the last thing is this mystery piece of paper. <laughs> Which is here for a reason, because yesterday, yesterday I was thinking to myself about how, um, if I was going to have like a mobile office and a portable office, how would I recreate my desk setup in terms of my notice board and my family photos and my references that I always have stuck on the wall? Obviously, if you're moving from table to table all the time, like hot in a hot desking situation, you can't bring all of your stuff with you and stick it on the wall everywhere you go. So I was thinking to myself, how could I make a sort of a fold out? screen, fold out folder, where I could put, for example, my um, monthly calendar on, maybe stick a few photos, maybe have like a vision board. And obviously it's not gonna be this tiny, this is just me trying to make a little model. Um, and I'm thinking about making it out of a couple of A4 binders, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna do yet. 
I'll let you know. But the idea would be is that this would fold um, into A4, and then now I just pop it in a um, in my bag or into or you could just shove it on the shelf. And then when it's time to work, um, you take it out and you set it up on your desk like that, um, and then work here and you can sort of see. So it's like a miniature <laughs> model. Anyway, I was playing around with paper yesterday to try and work it out and um, that's why it's on my desk. So I hope that was interesting. I hope that wasn't too weird or too like, maybe they, I don't have anything particularly exciting on my desk. Um, so I hope it wasn't too boring, but um, I thought I would just do it and have a little chat about the things that I have. If anybody else feels like doing a, a similar video or you have uh, already done similar videos or you've seen similar videos let me know because I love a good desk tour um, and I realize I don't have tons of stuff but that is because I'm in the process of downsizing because we're going to move to the UK and also I'm trying to sort of I, I suppose I'm trying to identify my absolute necessities um, of what I need in front of me to actually work and to function um, so yeah that was quite good though because that made it not a crazy long video as it would have been um, if I'd have done everything else that I own. <laughs> so anyway, say hello down below if you feel like it and I will see you again soon in a different video. Bye!